Hey, what's going on? Let's go over some of the changes regarding vehicles that changed the game massively, but are not included in the patch notes for some reason. I have dug through all the files and found these changes. It may not be entirely comprehensive, but this is what I have so far. I'm not going to go over the ones that are already on the patch notes since they are quite self-explanatory. There are quite a lot of ninja changes, so make sure you stay till the end so you can have an educated decision on how to adjust your gameplay style. Let's go over the tanks first, then we can cover some of the plane changes. First of all, the howitzers are now fixed, yes! When 5.2 launched with a massive tank overhaul, the howitzers were using a wrong damage curve, so it became non-viable. It had a one-hit kill blast radius of 2.325 meters, which is smaller than the regular cannon from the Crocodile, the Tiger, the Panzer IV, and the Sukh Force W cannon, and so on. It was simply not worth using it. But now, the curve has been fixed, and it is once again a viable option for those who may enjoy this kind of gameplay. As you can see here on the diagram, which is roughly drawn to scale, the red is 5.2, and the green is 6.2. And this will be consistent throughout the entire video. The new and improved howitzer shell, which has the same blast radius across all howitzers tanks like the Churchill, the Sherman, Kami, Chiha, and so on. Except for the LVT. The LVT has a smaller one hit kill blast radius at 2.6 meters, which is still quite decent. But for the rest of the tanks, they are now at 3.1 meters, one hit kill blast radius, and that is massive. It will be fantastic for clearing houses and bunkers, or just some pesky infantry behind a rock. And I do want to quickly mention that all the HE shells now have more of a drop, so long range sniping is definitely affected, although not massively. So back to blast radius. There are also 5 additional tanks that have their default HE shells blast radius increased. These will be the Panzer 38T, the Staghound without the Little John adapter, the Sherman, the Type 97 Chiha, and the Churchill gun carrier. I'm going to discuss the first four tanks first because they are quite similar. These only apply to their default HE cannon and not their specialized cannon like the 76mm on the Sherman. And previously in 5.2, these tanks one hit kill blast radius is at 1.6 meters. Now, they have been buffed to 2 meters as shown here in the diagram. I have been using the 38T for the past 2 days or so, and I can say that it is definitely noticeable and is quickly becoming one of my favorite German tanks to use. And as for the Sherman and the Type 97, the default cannon may be something to consider using, but I'm now starting to lean towards either the howitzer or the biggest cannon you can get just because of how many enemy tanks you encounter. The 76mm is still probably going to be a top pick on the Sherman, and as for the Chiha, it is a little bit more complicated, so let's take a look at it more closely. So, the changes to the Type 97 Chiha is a bit more drastic. Of course, the Howitzer and the default HE cannons have changed the way I described just now. There are additional changes to the Type 5 cannon, and that is the biggest cannon you can put on there. The Type 3, which is the intermediate one, is unchanged, and it is not really an attractive choice at this time. The Type 5 cannon has received a whopping 66% increase in impact damage. It is of course not as much as that in-game because there is also the blast damage to be taken into account. The in-game value will range from a roughly 46% to 60% increase in damage, and to give you an example, the minimum damage you can do to a Sherman in 5.2, which is a ricochet shot to the front, was 17 damage, and now it is 24 to 25 damage. The maximum damage, which is a perfect shot to the rear, previously did 53 damage, now it is at 83. The Type 5 cannon is now identical to the Sherman Heat T shell, and is now in a dedicated anti-tank role. It has more shells than the Sherman Heat T, but it's overall less versatile than the Sherman because you cannot switch the regular HG shell on the Type 5. There is also another caveat. The Type 5 
Because of its superior firepower against tanks, it has a blast radius nerf from a one hit kill distance of 1.6 meters to 1.2 meters. You will have to be quite on point with your shots to land a one hit KO. And for the maps with lots of tanks, especially on breakthrough, this may still be your best bet and you can rely on your coaxial machine guns to finish off infantry. Otherwise, feel free to try out the howitzer. At this time, there is no reason for you to use a Type 3 cannon at all. You are better off running the default 57mm cannon with the AT shell upgrade which will give you a better rate of fire, more ammo, and potentially higher damage against tanks with the AT shells. Of course, you can also upgrade to have a whole cannon so your teammate can also help you out with armor engagement. Another tank that has seen some massive changes would be the Churchill Gun Carrier. It was a mediocre, if not simply terrible tank before, with some merits at holding its ground. Now, it is going to be better at that role. Let's take a look at the default HE shell here. It has seen an increase in one hit kill blast radius from 2 meters to 2.4 meters, matching the Tiger, the Crocodile, and the Panzer IV and the Stuk IV stubby cannons. It also kept its relatively fast velocity at 590 meters per second, which is superior to all of the other tanks I just mentioned. The AP shell saw a massive buff of 54 to 55 percent in damage to other tanks. It is now capable of one-shotting a light and a medium tank in the rear. That is just a hair less powerful than the Tiger Heat, which can also do the same, but with half the shell velocity. So the Churchill Gun Carrier's AP shell is overall much better than the Tiger Heat shell. And this may be one of the go-to tanks to use, let's say for Panzerstorm Breakthrough defending the German push other than the trusty Valentine Mark 8 of course. And also, the Hess shell has also been buffed and will generally do more damage than the AP shell but may not be as effective for the one hit rear shots. It also travels at a much slower speed of 460 meters per second. And speaking of shells, all the AT shells got quite a massive buff. I have a graph of all the shells that saw a change in their impact damage. Blue here is the impact damage in 5.2, and red is the impact damage in 6.2. And feel free to pause this if you need to, by the way. Most of these are AP or AT shells, but a few HG shells also got some minor buff. This would mean that tank vs tank combat is going to be much faster and much more punishing. This also gives dedicated HG shell loadout more drawback when an enemy with an NT armor shell can be quite superior in a 1v1 tank fight. Here is another view of the graph in percent increase form. This is particularly useful when deciding whether you should revisit a particular loadout. And a few notable ones that I didn't already mention earlier would be the Tiger APCR shell, which is very close to being able to one hit a medium tank in the rear, dealing roughly 93 to 94 damage. I may also prefer this over the heat, given that you can have increased ammo count upgrade with that tree. The Valentine 6 pounder AP shell also saw a massive buff. Now it is actually matching the Archer's APDS shell damage. I am quite surprised the Archer's APDS did not get buffed along with it given now there is even less reason to use the Archer. But here you go! Also feel free to pause the video if you need to take a look at this more closely. Now, let's switch gears and talk about planes. Let's start off with the Pacific Planes. If you flew the Corsair and felt that it was really slow, you may have forgotten to respect your planes because they have reset the canopy specialization to match the Zero's Fint barrels. Someone on Reddit actually did a side-by-side -side comparison and found that the Corsair's fin barrel is actually slightly better, allowing it to shoot a few extra bullets before overheating. But that is really minor at roughly 2-3% difference. And the A6M20 LMG got a nerf with a sooner damage drop-off. It was definitely noticeable when I was using the Zero. The previous drop off distance ranged from 70 to 150 meters, and now it is at 50 to 130 meters. The 8x rockets on all the Pacific planes, and basically all the other planes, also saw an increase in rate of fire by 25% and 
and velocity by 100%, so you may need to readjust your lead. Also, the 500 pounds times 2 bombs now have a longer delay between bomb drops, and this is to make one hit killing a tank from a quick strafe harder to do. It is still totally viable if you dive bomb, but it's definitely harder than before. Now a bit about the European front. The Mosquito 6 pounder blast radius has increased dramatically by 50% with an inner blast radius approaching its ultra blast radius. And this means it is a lot easier to deal full damage to targets. The hit registration issue with the 6 pounder against planes also seem to have resolved at least for me. I was actually just leveling up the plane since I don't fly much in the European maps, but I find it quite reliable and I did not experience a single dusting event leveling the plane all the way to level 4. Now this is a potentially broken mechanic and may not be intended. The 8x RP3 rockets on the Mosquito and the Spitfire VB may have received the land RP3 rocket value on the stack count. So now with these two planes with that upgrade, it can one pass a tank with no issue. I hope this gets fixed soon since it is really not intended. Also one more thing regarding planes. It is actually the AAs. They have been buffed slightly and if you are a plane trying to go straight at the AA, you are going to die. And I think this is a pretty good change. We'll see. We'll fly a little bit more and come to a better conclusion. Anyway. That's it for the video, I hope this better informs you about the changes in this patch that did not make it into the patch notes. Let me know down in the comment section if you find anything else. If you dislike this, thumbs down. If you do, thumbs up and subscribe. Have a fantastic day and I will see you all again soon.